Hi, I'm Steve Corona, and I'm your host for this virtual internship. And today, our guest is Tom Case. He's the representative for the United Brotherhood of Carpenters Local 232. So tell me about your apprenticeship program. Um, we have uh, apprenticeship programs like some of the other trades do. Our apprenticeship program is hosted in Warsaw, Indiana, because it encompasses our 20 counties here um, in Northeast. So we have five different apprenticeships in the state of Indiana around all the bigger cities. And um, ours is in Warsaw because it has guys from South Bend, from Kokomo, from all over the 20 county areas coming to our apprenticeship. Um, I think currently we have about 270 enrolled apprentices in the program. Um, we are affiliated with Ivy Tech, so you do get a bachelor's degree, or I'm sorry, an associate's degree uh, in a four-year program. And um, that program comes to you at a cost of only your book fees. You pay $100 a year for your books. Outside of that, everything else is, is covered. And you go to school for 40 hours each quarter during a regular work week. So you don't have to go after work. You would go directly to our school, take 40 hours of classes. And um, each year you uh, finish your classwork. And, uh, your tools get inspected and you work the number of hours required by the by our department and then you advance to the next stage. So your setup is a little different than some of the other apprenticeship programs. Yes, and some we of may... them are after school or, or after work um, and then some of them are five-year programs. Ours is only four. Tell me about the selection process. Okay, we have a unique a, a process. Anyone can come put an application in at our apprenticeship. Mm -hmm. um, our contractors can hire directly off the street from individuals. So you could end up putting an application in with our contractors and they in, would come to us and say, we need to put this individual into the apprenticeship and you would start immediately into our apprenticeship in that fashion. Um, we also have pre-apprenticeships available so that if you're not graduated high school yet and your school has a program um, that we can work with our contractors with, you work with our contractors, and then when you graduate, you enter our apprenticeship. Okay. Uh, tell me a little bit about some of the essential skills and qualities that you're looking for in these apprentices. Um, <clears throat> we're honestly looking for the best thinkers on their feet, um, individuals who can work well with their hands, of course, and have, have the ability to, to learn by watching other people. The, the, the academics of what we're looking for is mid to, to above math skills. Your geometry becomes very important in what we do. Um, good communication skills because you're working with other people uh, that, uh, that have the knowledge and are trying to get it to you. So we work in teams. So it's very important that you are, can communicate with the other workers so that you can understand what you need to do. What level of education and experience are you looking for? Experience-wise is, is, is mostly taught on, on the field. So, so you can have little to no experience to get started. Um, Education-wise, of course, to enter our apprenticeship, you have to have a GED or a diploma so that you um, can enroll in college because you are enrolled in the college courses. If I'm an applicant thinking about this, can I prepare for this selection and application process? You can think about it, but it, there, there's not really much preparation. Um, um, and, and the biggest preparation that we would ask for is make sure that your, that your math skills through school that uh, take the highest levels of math possible that you can, that you can do, uh, because that's important. I'm not gonna say trigon trigonometry is not a necessity, but it sure is make the rest of it easy if your math levels are that high. During the four-year apprenticeship program, what's starting pay in year one? Year one apprentice is at fourteen eighty-seven an hour, um, and that changes yearly because we negotiate wages that on June first each year those wages um, are increased annually. Once I complete the apprentice, what's then that uh, starting pay for a journeyman? The journeyman scale currently is at twenty-six forty-seven an hour. And benefits? What's what are the benefits along with the pay? Um, we. Boast on having uh, good health care, 
So your health insurance is paid for by the contractor. None of it comes out of your pocket except for um, you know, expenses that would normally under for deductibles and that sort of thing. Um, we have a pension plan that's in place um, and doing very well. So uh, the, we have pension requirements that go in there and it's not something that, that you would think about, but when you retire 30 years later and 55 years of age, you can draw that full pension for the rest of your life. And we also have an annuity program that's similar to like a 401k, so that you do not contribute to, but the contractor does. So the, the, that benefit plan of health insurance, um, pension and annuity uh, are almost $17 an hour. How do you conduct your training? Is it hands-on learning? Is it book learning? Is it computer one-on-one? -on -one? Um, most of the skills you're gonna learn are in the field from the other workers. Uh, when you go to our through our apprenticeship, you're gonna learn the kind of the nuts and bolts and how that goes together and maybe some things that you might not be seeing with the contractor you work for. So um, mostly hands-on training. There is some book work involved. Um, and a little computer training, but realistically, we know that what you're doing is your hands working in the field. So that's what happens at our apprenticeship. As an apprentice, what are the expectations, duties, and responsibilities? Um, one of the biggest things that our apprentices need to understand is you must be where you're supposed to be on time. Um, jobs start early, they start six o'clock to seven o'clock in the morning, that's when you need to be there and not just on time but beforehand so that you're prepared and ready to go to work. Secondly, you need to understand that your personal life and your phone is very important to you, however it is not to your employer. So therefore you need to leave that in the car or shut it off and only, only look at it during breaks and during lunchtime periods because that's um, that's your personal thing that you need to do, not necessarily something on company time. Um, that's pretty much it, and then be ready to go to work when, when it's time. You mentioned this before, but let me ask it again. What's a typical work day and work week like? Um, as a rule, it's a 40-hour work week. Um, there are certain times where jobs require more than that, where you'll work overtime. Um, but a work day in our contract is 6 a.m., um, and an eight-hour day is start time. Normal start times during kind of revolve around the daylight hours if you're working outside. So um, it can be anywhere from six o'clock in the morning to eight o'clock in the morning start time. And then you're off, of course, eight hours later with a half hour lunch period. What is the most important aspect of the program that interested applicants need to be aware of? Um, pride. You're gonna be building America in the things that you do. So therefore, you're gonna be able to look back a period of 10 years later and have a sense of pride that I built that, I worked on that project. Some of the local projects around here that we see that you wouldn't think of, they're there, but you wouldn't think about it. The Martin Luther King Bridge was built by Union Carpenters. The uh, Parkview facility, the entire facility, Union Carpenters from the very beginning to the end of the job, uh, putting the doorknobs on and handing over keys to the owner. Um, Sweetwater Sound, we have been out there working for 15 years building that complex out there. You have a sense of pride when you drive by these places and you can see the work that you've done and be proud that that building's going to stand there for an eternity. How do you evaluate performance? Um, performance is, is a hard thing to evaluate on a daily basis, um, but overall your ability to, to retain the skills that you've learned yesterday and apply them today and tomorrow is a very, very big part of what we do. Um, we do it right the first time. So once you've learned something, you're going to retain that knowledge and your performance is going to be based on what you can remember that you might have done six months ago and haven't done since. So therefore, it's, a, it's an ability to, to remember how things are done because every situation is different. Every time you do a, 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 a room, there might be something a little bit different about it, but it's very similar. Mm -hmm. And you can, your, your performance is gonna be based on your predictivity and your ability to recall doing this once before. For each and every apprentice, what does success look like? The, your individual success is going to be the ability to move within a company into uh, more uh, responsible positions, 
Um, we have lead carpenters that run smaller jobs. We have the ability to become a foreman in a company, the ability to be a superintendent who runs the entire job, including directing the other crafts, or we even have uh, some apprentices that have moved into the office and become uh, project estimators and, and project managers, um, all the way up to owning your own company. So your own vision of success is what you put your mind to doing. Not every apprentice is successful. So if I'm a struggling apprentice in your program, what resources do you provide me? We have a mentoring program where we assign someone that the new apprentice is working with to communicate to. Um, carpentry and the skilled trades and construction in general is a, is a, uh, a very specific mindset. It's uh, for some individuals that have problems and, and, and struggle with working with other people in fashions, they need someone to talk to and we have those mentors in place. And we also, as representatives, we can, uh, we're a phone call away. Um, if there's anything we can help with, we like to talk to you and try to help you resolve any issues or problems you may have. What are the biggest challenges for an apprentice of this program? Um, this is the kind of work you may ne have never done in your life. Uh, but it's very physical. Um, you, there's times where you're going to be working in the uh, hot summer where it's 90, 95 degrees and there may be no breeze. There's other times where you're going to be working and it's 10 degrees outside. Some of the challenges that we run into is are uh, um, just the change in weather. And, and uh, if the weather changes drastically and a, and a job site needs to be shut down, there could be a financial challenge as well. That is something that's real and it does happen because uh, you may end up with a couple of days off without pay because of the fact that it snowed and we just can't do anything about that. So that's one of the many challenges. Once the person completes the apprenticeship, what's the next opportunity? What's the next step? Um, hopefully by the time they um, uh, get through the apprenticeship, they have been working for a contractor for four years or a few different contractors over the four years um, and, and staying employed with a contractor. We call it finding a home. Not, uh, some guys like to move around from contractor to contractor to learn different skills. Others like it where they are. So um, we hope that by the time they are uh, topped out, which is what we call it, in a journeyman, that they are working with a contractor and are very successful in that position and uh, don't ever need to leave. But if they do, they have the skill to go elsewhere. What is the typical career path? Most guys stay carpenters. They, they continue to work in the field. Um, as I mentioned before, some become foremen or superintendents for the companies, mm -hmm. and that's pretty common. And as a superintendent, you're kind of the top of, unless you decide to go in the office or open your own company, you are where you're going to be. What, what professional organizations, advanced education and training are beneficial for this field? Um, we're affiliated with Ivy Tech uh, because they have a program for construction. Um, of course, any engineering, Purdue universities for uh, the en or engineering degrees are beneficial. Um, we do a lot of on the spot thinking of how things go together and structurally that's important. We do make suggestions to architects on what should be work or what will not work because always on paper it may not have been fully thought through so um, any anything that uh, to be beneficial for this field would would be some sort of an engineering degrees or anything of that nature what advice would you give a middle school student or a high school student who is watching this video um, one of the one of the many things that I've always learned is find something that you enjoy doing um, there are many skilled trades within the construction world. You could be a plumber, electrician, a carpenter, um, operator, all of which are great fields to work in, and they're a little bit different, each one of them. Um, find something that you enjoy doing, and you'll never work a day in your life. Final thoughts. What's your story? Keep an open mind to anything you do. Um, when somebody asked me what I wanted to be when I grow up, um, I would have said a firefighter or a policeman or something along those lines. 
because I wanted to help people. Um, I found a different way to help people. Um, being a representative for this organization has been like no other. I get to help people every day to be better people and that's something that I've always enjoyed. So therefore, uh, keep an open mind whatever you decide to do. Um, be proud of whatever it is you do and you'll be a successful person.